Good morning, how are you today? It's a beautiful Wednesday in wonderful Brisbane, Australia. My name's Linda and I'm a trauma recovery coach consultant. And what I want to do today is give you a moment to grab a pen and paper so that as we go through and talk about three key changes in the brain from childhood trauma, you're able to take notes. And as you take notes, you're then going to be able to take them to your therapist or your trauma coach and you're going to be able to sit down and discuss the impact in your life that this has had and where you want to go from here. So we need to be able to look at these things and go, hmm, okay, so that's a reality that's happened. Where am I going forward from here? Uh, we take notes because our memory is or can be terrible. Uh, I lost my entire memory bank at one point and it's very, very hard to get back, but it takes work and we can do it. Okay, so let's grab our infographic today. Now, if you're here for the first time, feel welcome to say good day. And if you're here for the replay, just leave a hashtag replay because I love to catch up and say good day. And then if you and if you're here on watching the YouTube video, remember to hit subscribe. Um, don't you just love how we've got to do all this stuff so that you know when the latest video is out? Okay, now today's information comes from a guy and his name is Bessel van der Kolk. He's a proper professional, okay, and it's from the Body Keeps the Score. As you can see, it's a <laughs> really well loved book, and actually. If you have books and you're like me and you're never used to actually, you know, put marks on them or anything, these are wonderful little tags which you can stick along the sides and reference without actually having to tag the book. Now, this book will help you immensely understand the impact of trauma on the brain, how they came about the studies, what it means and gives you a whole bunch of information how to work with the information as well. So one of the first one um, of the key changes that happen in childhood trauma is our threat perception system is changed. So the primitive part of the brain, which is then the back brain stem and you know down the lower half of the brain, lower half, lower third of the brain, um, it becomes fear driven, whereas those who haven't experienced trauma see things as manageable. So just in our day to day life now, if we were to go, right, how can I see that that affects me, that one particular part, you could sit down and say, right, um, the last thing that happened seemed like a major incident. So it has a mum, oh my goodness. When I was um, raising my three kids, as a mum, it was like every time something had happened, it'd be like this. It would be perceived as like this massive thing that I have to sort out and work through. And when we did, and then you know, it's like trying to put all the pieces together, and then you end up holding your breath and you're going, "How can I manage this?" Okay, and this is because of how our brain developed from childhood when we experience trauma. And um, then the second thing that happens is the higher brain where we distinguish what is relevant now and what can be dismissed gets messed up making it hard to focus on what is happening right now. It makes it difficult to engage with ordinary situations. And <laughs> if you look Think about the prefrontal cortex, it's where we get um, order, right? It puts everything in sequential order for us, and especially when things are emotional. So people who don't have childhood developmental trauma can take something and go, right, this is relevant, I need to focus on this, and then this, and then this. Whereas we don't. <laughs> we get a bunch of stuff in front of us and we have no idea which is the first one to be relevant and if you look at this and examine it in your day-to-day -day life now you're going to be able to see this uh, because you can have a number of things ready to do today 
and then you don't know where to start. And you know what? <laughs> I've done so many years of work and working out different ways around this and now I know that I have to sit down to, and to work through both of these, I have to sit down, make a list and then put it actually in order uh, of what I need to do today. And then what I do now, especially, is add times to it. Now the time, adding time to it is doesn't mean, right, that's it, I've got to stick to it. Adding time to it actually gives my brain structure of where I'm at in the now and it helps in the whole mindfulness process. So with mindfulness, we want to be aware of what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, uh, my whole body presence, physical presence now. And doing an exercise like this helps us, helps retrain our brain literally in order to be able to put our day in an actual order, okay? So if you're sitting there and you go, oh my goodness, you know, all the years that I've thought, oh, it's just me, you know, there's something wrong with me. Well, yeah, we're, it's true. There was something biologically and neurologically wrong, but we can correct it as adults. And we just didn't know this information. Uh, this kind of information is only starting to filter through in the last five years, okay? So <laughs> all the years that you've battled going, oh my goodness, why does my day continue to get into disarray and chaos? It's literally not your fault. It's because our brain developed in a whole different way to somebody who hasn't experienced trauma. And science has proven this, okay? That's the best part. Science has proven all of this now, okay? And as we begin to examine our day and examine what's happening literally in our chief processing center, we're then able to go, okay, that is happening, but now I'm going to get strategies for myself and put them into place. And the strategies can be endless what we do. Uh, especially with the memory, when I was going through, like I've had, I got lost everything. So I couldn't talk, couldn't walk. Zero memory, even down to couldn't remember how to walk, talk, um, walk, talk, cook, clean. I remember standing in the laundry one day going, oh my goodness, I can't remember how to do the laundry. And at the time, I can laugh now, but at the time I was gutted. I'm like, you know, this should be such an autom automatic thing to do. And it wasn't. So we've got to put the work in to retrain our brain and we can do this. If I'm talking again, <laughs> we can retrain our brain so that we can have our memory back. Remember the brain's plastic and we can create new neural pathways. Okay, so the third thing, um, our self-sensing system, which is in the midline part of the brain and goes all through the brain is my understanding. And I'm no expert. <laughs> Uh, so when we're in a state of terror, we feel heartache and gut-wrenching emotions, okay? So the pain and it's, and literally, because remember now we know we've got uh, this brain, brain in our heart, brain in our gut, and they're all interlinked. So when we're experiencing terror as a child, it's too overwhelming. We don't have the language. We don't understand what's going on because we're supposed to be in a place where we're safe, where we're nurtured, and so much more. We could do a whole chat show on that, but we won't today. But because internally that's happening for us, the overwhelm is happening for us. So all of our senses are in the overwhelm. All right, and we have no idea how to process that kind of thing as a child. We begin to literally hold our breath and our self-sensing system begins to be blunted, okay? So we, we, especially with things like physical, sexual and emotional abuse, we literally dumb down our whole system, they call it blunted, our blunt house system in order that we can cope and get through whatever's happening, whatever situation we're in and we do this repeatedly. So our brain gets trained to shut down. 
Now, what ha- what that means is our also, because we're shut down and our self-sensing system is shut down to what's, to cope with what's going on, it also means that our brain gets trained not to feel pleasure, excitement and deep connection, which are all things that at our core as human beings we need to feel alive. Okay, we need to feel curious. We need to feel... Um, passion for what that you know there is a reason why we're here and what we're doing to feel uh, absolute wonderment in things like being a mom or being part of somebody's life it's and but we can get it back that's the good news okay we can get it back we can do the work And trauma is interpersonal, okay? Trauma didn't happen while we were there on our own. There are one person or other people there. So what we need to do as adults is get into a situation where we're safe, okay? We've got to be safe. Our whole system requires that we're in a safe relationship uh, with a therapist, a coach, a mentor, a pastor, um, anyone else that is helping you through this Uh, and has healthy boundaries, (laughs) understands trauma, understands the bigger context of trauma in your life and how to teach you how to become person-centered again. So focus in what you, your brain, your body need at this given point in time. Okay. um... (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Barbara. (laughs) bit late now. That's all right. Um, Amy says, I've got a kiddo dealing with this. We're trying everything to help her, but she just won't, can't. She doesn't think that she has a problem. Literally our entire family has been diagnosed with PTSD just from dealing with her anger and rages. And that's true. Uh, um, sorry, Amy, I'm sorry that you're going through that. You're the most wonderful mum and stepmom, and truly you give everything you can to this situation. And you're right, she's got to be the one that chooses to slow down, to breathe, to calm her whole nervous system down. And until she wants to choose to do that, you can't change it because it's our internal system and it has to be something that we choose, okay, that we as, well, as adults, as teenagers, that we choose that we want to calm our system down. And actually, Amy, if you grab the book, so I don't know if you saw, The Body Keeps the Score, and in the back of it, it's also, first of all, the first part will give you heaps of information uh, to understand what's happening internally for her and for all of your family. And it will, and then it goes into ways of being able to deal with it, or deal with it, that sounds awful, ways of being able to manage and improve the life situation where where all of you are at at this point in time so go for it but you're right until they're willing to change um and the thing i'd ask too is as a young child what's her have you thought about so i don't know if you have or haven't what's her reward for acting like this? Like, what does she perceive as her reward for her bad behaviour? And you might have to work it backwards instead of looking at it logically. Look at what is the emotional reward that she gains by continuing to act in this manner, okay? Where is she... Because she will be trying to control her external world in order to make sense of her internal world, okay? I hope that helps a little bit. And we do that as adults too. Until we learn and understand this information, we'll always um, be acting out, so to speak, because we're trying to control our external world until our internal world, we can make sense of it. And that's why I love this work. Because of all the information that we've got now, it makes sense Uh, for us and we can sit and look at our internal system and go ah because I can understand that because I can put language around it because I can put an order to it 
then once it makes sense, I feel safe to examine my internal system. Okay, thanks for joining in everyone. It was great to have you with me today. Feel welcome to uh, ask any questions down below. I'm always happy to help and answer anything that I can. And remember, we're the tortoises in this race. The hare didn't win, the tortoise did. And every one step that we take once a day builds upon an ever-increasing um, platform that we get to reclaim our lives. Okay, blessings and dreams, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.